Okay, we were to another integral. We've got the integral from zero to 100 pi, cosine to the 99th x, dx. Okay, this is actually a problem I did recently. We did four quick methods. This one, what I'm doing in this video was actually the fifth method and I had it deleted from that video just because I have a few problems with this method. But I just wanted to go over and try to clarify what I know, what I don't know, what you should know, what you should not know, and what you just shouldn't tell anyone no matter what. Okay, so to get started with this, I'm actually gonna kinda treat it like any, if it was an indefinite integral, you've got an odd power. We have this method that you can use a lot and just strip out an x to try to set up a u substitution. So I'll strip out one x on the end here, and then what we're left with is cosine to the 98th x. But then for this right here, I can split this up and try to get a cosine squared. So if we have cosine squared x, I can write this as cosine squared to the 49th. But then for the cosine squared, in order to set up, we want to get a sine to do a u substitution for cosine squared x. I can write it as 1 minus sine squared x, and this is all to the 49. But then now we have this set up for a u substitution. I can make my u equal to sine of x, and then du is just going to be cosine x dx. So we go ahead with this and we update our bounds first, plugging in 100 pi, sine at 100 pi. Any, any integer multiple of pi, this is going to be 0. Plug 0 in at sine. Sine of 0 is just 0. Doing all this, we end up with 1 minus u squared to the 49th du. But then notice, we don't really care what this is right here because our bounds are just 0 to 0. There's no width to this integral. There's no area under the curve. This thing is just going to be 0. And so our solution, just like that, we get a 0. Now the trouble I had in the video is just this substitution, u equal to sine x. Well, sine is definitely not injective one to one on these bounds from zero to 100 pi. This curve is just gonna repeat over and over again. And this kind of thing can create all kinds of problems, but actually in this case, it's fine. There's really no problem with this substitution. There's no like ambiguity of having multiple values. This all works really well. It's really the trouble is a different kind of case like if you had an even power here and you tried to do the same thing, that's where we have a problem. And so I think let's look at a similar example and see where the trouble is. Okay, so now we have our similar problem, kind of simpler with the smaller exponent, but just to make the case, let's do this. But the key is the exponent now is even. And we can really just do this with straightforward methods. I can use the identity on this for power reduction on cosine squared. So we can write it as integral from zero to 100 pi, and then I can write this as one plus cosine and then we can just go ahead and integrate this. We're gonna have one half in front. This is gonna be an x. This is gonna be one half sine two x, and we just need to evaluate from zero to 100 pi. Now the zero value on this is gonna be nothing, so we're not gonna worry about that. Also, when you plug in 100 pi in here, this is also going to zero, so we just need to plug in 100 pi for x, and so our solution for this is just gonna be 50 pi. But now my question for this one is what happens if we try to do the same substitution we did before? You know, even if it's inefficient, it doesn't really make sense to do it here. Let's just say we try that because we're, we're allowed to try whatever we want for a substitution. There's no rules against trying. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna split up the cosine squared, write it as cosine x times cosine x. And we're setting up our substitution where this is gonna be our du, but we're gonna need a value for cosine in terms of sine. So just actually, let's put the substitution up there that we did before. So we're gonna to wanna to do u equal to sine x, and then du is just cos x dx. And so then we're gonna need our value for cosine, and we have our u in terms of sine. So what we can do is we can use, we know cosine squared x is one minus sine squared x. So we can take a square root on both sides, get our value for cosine x, but we're gonna need plus minus on this because notice cosine is not just gonna be positive. The square root just returns a positive value. So we need the plus or minus to represent the negative values that we're gonna get between, 100, between zero and 100 pi. So now if we just go ahead with this substitution right now, you plug in 100 pi, the same thing is gonna happen. This becomes zero, you plug in zero, we still have zero. Now we have our cosine values this, and then everything else is gonna be just du. But now with our bounds going from zero to zero, that tells us the whole integral has no width again, and the solution has to be zero, but we have a few problems now, right? Because now this is not the same as what we found before. 
And of course, this one's gonna be the wrong answer. And this is because you know, we forced the substitution to happen. This principle is true that if our bonds are the same, it's zero. But with our substitution, we didn't get a unique value. This plus or minus here is really a big problem. So if for some reason we really wanted to do it this way, even though, like I said, it's not the best method, but if you really wanted to do it this way, you have to do it in a way where the substitution is gonna be unique, where you don't have a plus or minus on it like this. What you could do is do something kind of similar to what I did in that other video, and notice that cosine or sine is gonna be, it's gonna have a period of two pi, so you can break this up as 50 times two pi. What that's gonna allow you to do is just bring out a 50 in front, just knowing that what we're looking at is 50 copies of this integral from zero to two pi. But actually in this case, it's a little different than our other problem. And what I can do is, it's actually the same, just a pi. So I can just think of this like 100 times pi and bring 100 out front of the integral. So now we're just integrating from zero to pi. But what I wanna do is I wanna break that up for positive and negative cosine values. So what we can do is we can say from zero to pi over two, all of our cosine values are positive. And then for the rest of the integral, we're going from pi over two to pi. And then that's gonna be second quadrant, cosine's always negative, so we know what to do there. So when we do this substitution, and actually let's write this in terms of u, because we know sine is u, so this is gonna be one minus u squared. So when we do this substitution now, what's gonna happen? First, when we update our bounds, plug in pi over two here, sine of pi over two is one. Over here, sine of zero is still zero. Here, we're still breaking it up this way. I just did this because it's more compact. So we still have our du, which is gonna be cosine x dx. For our cosine value, we'll use this. But now because we're in the first quadrant, we're just gonna use the positive values for this. We're gonna say this is gonna be one minus u squared du. Over here, pi, plugging that in, that's gonna be zero. This is still one. Again, this part's our du. But then we're gonna have another cosine left over. But now, second quadrant, we always want the negative value. So this is gonna become minus square root one minus u squared. But then here I can use the minus sign to flip the bounds. So we can have this now going from zero to one. And then what just happened was, now we just have two copies of the same integral. So what I can do is combine these together and bring a two out front, and this is gonna become 200. But now for this integral here, I've done this one quite a few times on the channel before, so I'm not gonna take a lot of time on it. But I think the quick way to look at this is the first quadrant of the unit circle. So if you just look at this, if you, you could rearrange this to something like the form x squared plus y squared equals to one if you just square both sides and manipulate this. But for the graph of this anyway, it's gonna be the square root implies all positive values and we're going from zero to one. So if this is our unit circle, radius right here is one. We're just looking at the first quadrant, area of a circle, pi r squared. So if the radius is one, the whole circle is gonna be pi. But if we just want the first quadrant, this is just gonna be pi over four. So putting this together, we're gonna to have 200 times pi over four, divide four into 200. And so for the solution to this, you just get 50 times pi. So there you go, kind of an elaborate workaround for this plus or minus situation. I mean, actually in real life, maybe the best way is to just avoid that altogether and don't even go that way. But if you did want to go that way, there's kind of some of the details on it and how it works. Anyway, hope that was helpful. Thanks everyone for watching today. Have a good day.